Panish, I do deny no prisoners. But I remember when the fight was done, and I was dry with rage and extreme toil, breathless and faint, leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, neat and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, his chin new wreath showed like stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a miller, and it was his finger and his thumb, yet a punted box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and it took to wave. Who then went angry when it next came there, took it in snub, and silly smiled and, and talked, and as soldiers were dead bodies by, he called them untaught knaves, unmannerly to bring such a slovenly, unhandsome corpse betwixt the wind and his nobility. And with any holiday and lady terms, questioned me, amongst the rest, demanded my prisoners on behalf of your majesty. I had them all smarting, my wounds now cold to be pestered by some popinjay, answered negligently. For I know not what, for he should or should not, he made me mad to see him shine and bisque and snuff so sweet, to talk so like a waiting gentlewoman about guns and drums and wounds, telling me the sovereignest thing on earth is paramacy for an inward bruise. And what a great pity so it was that the villainous saltpeter had been buried in the earth and taken out by many a good fellow that had destroyed it. So cowardly. And but for these vile guns, he himself had been a soldier. This, this bald and idle chap of his, my lord, I answered indiscreetly, as I have said, and I beseech you, do not allow his report to current an accusation betwixt my love and your high 